Hello, everyone. So we will start our tech talk. Uh, my name is Lu Fen. I'm a assistant professor in computer science. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is John Goodall. I'm the associate director for the Link Lab, and I'm also an associate professor within uh, the civil and environmental engineering department. So today, we'd like to tell, tell you about the smart cities research at Link Lab. So what is smart city? Different people may have different answer. And here's one definition I like. The smart city concept integrates information and communication technology and various physical devices connected to the network, forming cyber physical systems or the Internet of Things to improve the efficiency of city operations, promote economical growth, and enhance the quality of life. There are many different components of a smart city. For example, smart manufacturing, smart health, smart energy, and smart transportation. Smart city technologies are really revolutionizing cities around the world drawing increasing attention and investment from both governments and the industry. For example, in the US, the federal agency NIST is leading the Global Cities Teams Challenge with, over, with participations from over 150 cities. In Europe, the European, uh, European Commission is leading the European Innovation Partnerships on smart cities and communities with over 3,000 organization partners. And in China, more than 500 cities have started the transformation to smart cities. Companies such as Amazon, IBM, and Cisco are all developing smart city solutions. Just very recently, Cisco announced a one billion financing program for smart city. So here in the Link Lab, the way we're organizing ourselves around smart cities is within three thematic areas. So we have faculty members here that are interested in smart homes, smart buildings, and smart infrastructure, faculty that are interested in the environment and water resources and how to make those more sustainable uh, with smart solutions, and also faculty that are interested in transportation and mobility. What's unique about the Link Lab is that we're all together within this lab and we have this core bedrock of CPS technology that cuts across these different application domains within smart cities itself, but also across the different areas uh, such as autonomous systems and smart health as well, so more broad than just even just smart cities. Within the Link Lab, we've brought together faculty, as you heard, from five different program areas within the engineering school, but we don't want to stop there. We want to create partnerships outside of this, these walls as well. We want to engage across the university, so these are some examples from, from my work in, in hydrology and water resources that I'll talk about coming up but there's a lot of partnerships that we need to develop across the university to really uh, solve difficult problems um, within the college, architecture school, uh, the Re Environmental Resilience Institute that I'm a part of as well, that's a pan-university institute that was just recently funded, um, Data Science Institute as well. And then we don't wanna stop there, we wanna go outside and, and uh, engage industrial partners, government organizations, so that what we're doing in the university can have real impact on problems, difficult problems outside these walls. In our work, what, one of the ways that we're doing this is by helping to do flood prediction in a, in a better way than we can right now. So for flood forecasting, we're developing cloud-based solutions. What's shown here on the right is a map of all the VDOT-owned bridges and culverts within this part of the state. And we created a map in Behind the scenes, we're running a very sophisticated model in real time, simulating water flows through this system. So when there's an extreme rainfall event, we get flooding, we would know in real time whether bridges are vulnerable to being overtopped. This is not possible right now with existing techno technology. We're creating a solution, testing it here in Virginia that could be applied uh, more broadly as well. This is a partnership with, with VDOT. Um, VDOT's a really good partner for us for bringing our research from idea into implementation. We're also partnering a lot with the city of Norfolk, Virginia. So city of Norfolk, Virginia is facing very difficult flooding problems that are associated with sea level rise. Um, this is actually a, a street here um, that goes underneath a railroad. There's a pump there that normally pumps the water out when it rains, but the pump failed. 
So, so we have these kind of cascading failures within systems. It's supposed to be a smart system. It's supposed to pump when the water gets in there. When it fails, how do we create that re uh, resilience that we need within the system to make it still function um, in these kind of failure events? One of the things I think is really interesting that we're trying to do within the lab is really engage um, citizens as well. So there's this idea of crowdsourced data or citizen science data. We're partnering with Google. Google has this um, app called Waze where you can report traffic conditions in real time. One thing you can report in real time is whether it's flooded or not. So this gives us a new insight to whether roads have been flooded or not that we never had before. So we have a partnership with Google where we're getting this data from Waze and it allows us to see where the problem spots are within the city. We're also working with Weather Underground. So Weather Underground has this idea where anybody can set up a personal weather station. So you can go to Amazon right now, buy this weather station right here for about 200 bucks, set it up on your house, gets connected into your Wi-Fi. Um, these are a couple grad students that are setting it up on the top of Chemical Engineering Building. We're, we're setting it up here too to understand more fully how it works at a technical level and trying to improve on it as well as we with the idea of taking these weather stations and deploy them broadly over the city of Norfolk to know how much it's raining in every little small part of the city so we can predict flooding in real time. Ultimately, we pull all this data together from a variety of different sources, from tide gauges, from rain gauges, and then also from these flooding reports, and we can build these relationships that help us see, oh, if the tide is this high and you get this much rain at this particular time and this particular street intersection, we think it's gonna flood. If we have that level of information, then we can uh, move traffic around those flooded parts of the city more efficiently than we can right now and have less disruptions. We're not just doing this kind of data matching and, and data science type of work, we're also doing physical modeling within the group. So this is a model of the Hague area of Norfolk. And what you're seeing here with this, this pulsing is, is streets being flooded just by the tide going up and down. So this is during Hurricane Matthew. And the water from the um, ocean is kind of backing up into certain streets that are really low lying. These are old creek beds actually that have been filled in over years. And so you can kind of see um, nature kind of reclaiming those creek beds. And as the rain comes through, you'll see more of the city kind of light up um, and you see this flooding event in real time. So this is again, takes a lot of computational power to do these simulations, but this gives us new insight that we can use to help manage the system more effectively. One of the ways we're trying to leverage CPS technology, which is relatively new within my area of stormwater management, is to have more real-time control over stormwater systems. So if we have uh, valves and gates, for example, at the outlet of, of these creeks, we can prevent water from backing up into the system. And when, if we can control that water flow and hold it back when we need to and release it in a smart way, we can prevent floodings but we're not gonna be able to pre prevent all streets from being flooded. So when we know that we're gonna have an event causing flooding, we can push that out to other systems such as driving systems and, and alert drivers in real time that this event, flooding event might ha happen. So what just you, you just heard is stormwater management, which is actually one example of smart services could be running in a smart city. There are many other different types of smart city uh, services. For example, smart traffic service, smart emergency service, and air pollution service, et cetera. These smart services can be considered as cyber physical systems that collect data about our physical world through sensors, and then they control these physical devices. However, because these smart services are often developed by different stakeholders, so when these need to operate simultaneously in a smart city, there are many potential conflict. For example, consider if a smart traffic surface requests a traffic signal light to turn green because it wants to reduce the traffic congestion. But meanwhile, if an emergency vehicle is coming from an opposing direction, it may request the traffic light to turn red. So these are two actually conflicting actions that are requested by two different smart services. How are we going to detect this conflict and resolve it? Consider another example. If there is a big event happening in a city, the areas that nearby could cause an increase the traffic volume which will increase the traffic congestion and also the air pollution emissions. 
projects. We are developing a decision support system for city decision makers to help them detect and resolve these kind of conflicts. Our vision is that we, our system can, can intercept actions requested by different smart services. We're going to predict uh, if there are any potential conflict ahead of time and then uh, provide conflict resolutions when necessary. We have implemented a prototype and applied it to a simulated city based on real data from Manhattan, New York. The results have demonstrated that our system can help to detect and resolve conflict among multiple services. We're currently working with our community partners in the city of Cleveland to help the city policymakers detect and resolve conflicts. Okay, so what's really exciting to me about the Link Lab is this partnership across disciplines. So me as a civil engineer can think about one part of the smart city solution on stormwater and go deeply within that area. But that is part of a larger context that Lou just described and all these parts need to work together to have an effective solution. But at the end of the day, it's really, this is really about um, both these partnerships across faculty members, but also training graduate students. So the graduate students and undergraduates that are part of our research are getting this experience that they hadn't had before, working across disciplines, sitting next to um, uh, graduate students that are, are maybe getting a different degree than they are, and having these conversations that we think will bubble up new ideas that we haven't had before, new solutions, and they'll be trained in a way that they'll be able to address these multidisciplinary types of problems. So uh, the, the grad student, this is really for the grad students um, and their experience in this, in this program. And um, the, the big bet here is that by doing things in an interdisciplinary way, the students are gonna be com coming up with solutions that we never thought of before. All right, thank you. I'll be happy, we'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any.